But right now, we'll talk to our pal John Kime. He joins us every Monday at this time, covers the commanders for ESPN.com. And, John, we're never in the locker room, and his fans, we kind of thought it was a moral victory and felt pretty good about this team's response after the Bills game. What was the locker room like? Oh, man, it was quiet. And, you know, and it's funny because they responded very well to a really bad game last week. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised because they've done that for a few years. And so that's good, right? Mm -hmm. However, I think what was also encouraging, to be honest, was how quiet the locker room was mm -hmm. and how, um, how despondent they were because they knew that it was there for them. And mm -hmm. I think that, to be honest, is a – good step i mean ron rivera was as frustrated and upset after you know after a game like this as i've seen him but the locker room it felt like almost felt like a playoff loss it hurt. it stung him that bad so that to me is a good sign i think you know it's funny because sam 48 from the post and i were talking on my podcast about that how you know in the past there may have been more upbeat like hey you know this happened but we did this right and not that they'd be joyful, but there would be a little bit more upbeat. There was none of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there there was more like, could have done this, could have done that, and just very, very quiet. Which I think is the correct response. I mean, they yeah, they, they absolutely they proved I think that's growth. Yeah, <clears throat> they proved that they could compete with the best in the league, but they needed to prove that. And so I know, at least from a fan perspective, that was great to see. And I know that the coaches and Ron was pissed, but he even said that there's a lot of positives they're going to take from this. Um and and that's fine. You can label it whatever you want. That, I'm very proud of how that how they responded and super proud. I, I said this earlier, John. I think Sam Howe's a little naive, and God bless him for it. I don't think he realized how much sort of his starting <laughs> tenure here was kind of hanging in the balance. If he had another catastrophe, uh, you know, we he would have had a really short rope. I'm sure he would have still started this week, but yeah. you know, he just yeah. keeps buying himself more time with each good performance. And, you know, I thought the enemy did an unbelievable job this week, contra contrary to last week, where I thought it was a little questionable. But they max protected, quick stuff, moved them around. Just everything that you want as a fan, I saw. And I think Hal was just kind of, he was just being Sam Hal. He said, that wasn't me last week. He has that quiet confidence, and he showed it. Listen, the one thing we know about Hal is he doesn't get rattled. Yep. And one of the things that jumped out to me, was how he handled because to me when you have a bad game like that and you're a quarterback everybody's going to watch to see how you respond now i think in this case people knew because they've got like we've heard that all along right the demeanor is always the same but when you go back to shoot you go back to you talk to people that he played high school with or played for yeah they, in college they said the same thing so right. what stood out to me was during the week you know guys are in the locker room right and so we're in the locker room and they, he was always at his locker mm -hmm. and not that is that a, I don't know that that's necessarily a huge deal, except that it was, he was the same. He was the same as he was after the Broncos game, sitting in his locker, just chatting casually, whoever comes up to him. Um, but the point is he was there and his demeanor didn't change. And not that you'd expect him to be like rattled during the week, but sometimes guys hide and he does, he didn't do that. And I think that that's, a, you know, when, when you see that, like I thought he would respond well, partly because of that sort of demeanor. he That's what he does. You know, would Kirk hide respond. when he yeah. was here? Um, <laughs> not, not, not necessarily, but guys weren't as available. Like, he was available. So you could go up. You know, a lot of times with quarterbacks, um, shoot, when Robert was here, they would shield the hell they out of people. They protect them, yeah. I mean, it was like that. You talk about max protection. My God. <laughs> right. You know, you couldn't get – but you couldn't, like, it's even just to get to know a guy, to casual chat with them and just – like, mm -hmm. and you know, could, you could go and like, Hey, you know, what happened here? Like what? Mm -hmm. And he would answer like, yeah, you know, I got to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, so other guys might not be available and, and you know, but I just think for a young guy, for a young guy, I think that to me jumped out as a, this is how he handles things and he's going to be okay. John, another young guy that fought through some adversity yesterday was Jahan Dotson. He picked up an ankle injury. He had a, a yeah. big drop on a third down that could have kept the yeah. drive alive, but then he comes up huge with the touchdown late, and Sam put the ball on him perfectly. So that's another young player who hadn't been that heavily involved in the first three games, much more involved yesterday, so that was good to see. That's very good to see because they need him. And one of the things, one of the big things, it's funny because going into that game yesterday, their yards after the catch were horrible. 
horrible. And a lot of it was, you know, some of the routes they're running, we're not putting them. And this is not to blame her out, but like the style of routes. I mean, sometimes the comeback or whatever, you're not getting yards at the catch on some of these routes. Um, but the, the big thing with this offense was supposed to be get guys in position to get yards after the catch. And they did, they were getting a lot of that yesterday. And that was good to see because I think that's what this offense needs. Um, but like on that, on that play, you know, yeah, he had the drop. And it's funny because Dotson even said like the next time that Sam targeted him was on that touchdown throw. Mm-hmm. And so the point, you know, first of all, it was very decisive. Um, but it was also the confidence and the trust. I mean, and you should have that at Dotson. That kid's a good receiver. Like, you know, I and I know he's been he's had a slower start, but I still think the kid can play and he can be very good. Mm-hmm. Um, so games like that help. But it also, I think they did a good job too of isolating him on on in a in a very favorable matchup for him. But you still got to make the play, and he did. And so I think that's good to see. But they need they need more from. They need to create more um, yak for the, you know, put them in situations where they can get more of that. And obviously on that play, there's no yak, but he makes the play. And, but hey, and that, listen, on the crosser, he's in position to get yards after the catch mm-hmm. there too. But that's what this offense needs because you, it's just hard to, to sustain if you're not getting some of those kind of plays. Uh, let's talk about Emmanuel Forbes. <clears throat> yeah. uh, you know, tough matchup for him. I don't you know, blame him. You know, he's a rookie, whatever. <clears throat> they struggle. Um so I'm not making any uh, any large thoughts on him one way or the other, but I do question why it seemed like, and in, in, uh, AJ Brown said it that he was following him, yeah. right? Which is big yeah. time respect from from our coaching staff. But but on a matchup perspective, you just I don't know anything, John. So you correct me. It would seem to me that St. Juice might be a better matchup, right? He's a little more stronger, physical guy. Maybe could give him a little more. Uh, I don't know more. He could just be tougher with him at the line of scrimmage, right? Maybe bump him or whatever. And then maybe put – why wouldn't they have Forbes on Devontae, a little quicker guy? I don't know. I just well, – I question that, that. Yeah, part of that is when they're going to the three-receiver sets, then St. Juice goes inside. Uh-huh. So I, I'm a, I was a little bit surprised, too, that he was going with AJ. And you bring up the physical stuff, and on the um, on the one – the one the, I think it was the 28-yard one, the one where he's in cover two – like little, this is where like Ron was pretty annoyed with the quote unquote details of the game, right? Mm-hmm. And like on that one, you watch Kendall Fuller. There, it's it's a cover two, so you've got to reroute, jam the receiver. Mm-hmm. And you watch Kendall Fuller at the bottom of the screen jams Devonte Smith. He takes he disrupts the timing. Mm-hmm. Emmanuel kind of nudges him, mm-hmm. and so like there's no disruption of timing. They're going right. there all along, and if there's a disruption of timing, that throw isn't made. That's a detailed thing, and that's a you know that you can be a little bit more physical. And sometimes um, when you watch, like he's really aggressive on those double moves, and they know it. Like that touchdown was all set up by that, right? And then they threw some comebacks off of it in the in the overtime. But like the the double move, on I think part of it is that what he's going to have to learn is that while he is fast and has good recovery speed, you still have to maybe you know one way you could like for example on the touchdown. He positioned where he positioned himself on, on it. If if you're you maybe a yard deeper, you can react to the double move and still recover. But he, you know you're going to react to one or the other, and then you're cooked, right? And that's kind of what happened. So, uh, you know, I think some of that, and then sometimes, and Ron Rivera would talk about the eyes and the discipline. And there are a couple of times you see that too, where where like there was one, holy crap, there was excuse me, there was one where you know if you remember like. There was one where Devontae Smith is wide open, and I have no clue why Jalen Hurts didn't throw that ball. He ends up getting hit, and the ball gets knocked away, but he holds the ball. For, I'm like, if, I'm, if you're an Eagles fan, you're gonna, you would look back in that one and say, what the heck were you thinking? Why didn't you throw that? Like, he is open right away, and part of that was where Emmanuel's eyes were. And it got him in trouble. Like, if, and so he got very fortunate on that one as well. Now, you watch other plays, and it's like he handled this one, this one, this one. Well, you see the plant and drive that, that can be – it's excellent. But those handful of plays really hurt them. And mm-hmm. and then that's what he's going to have to learn. And it's part of it is the life of a young corner, but he's going to have to learn. And, and I think part of the – you know, certainly – Again, Rivera was pretty frustrated, and again, he talks about the eyes and the discipline, and you see some of that, and if you can correct that, you're in, you're in good shape, but you've got to correct it because teams are going to test you now on that. 
and they did that. Like they they get the the double move in to get the touchdown in regulation. Then they then you can see them kind of focused on don't get beat deep on some of these, and and you get a ten yard route in front of you, right? And so there's a, you, you're you're going to have to learn all of that. But the one thing again, like one. They're adults, and they're getting paid to play this game. Part of their job is dealing with the media afterwards. Mm. But he was one of the first guys we talked to after the game, and he answered the questions. And so that's always good. Um, but now, like, you know, you learn a lesson. And I think part of it, too, is when we saw those, that Baltimore, those practices, that's one of the things he had that he struggled with are some of those double moves. That's because he's very aggressive. And he's also, again, the way he positions himself, you know, it's, it's an aggressive <clears> – <throat> he's aggressive. So they took advantage of it. JK, um, let's talk about the uh, the touchdown after uh, Dotson, the decision not to go for two from right. Ron. You know, that cliche, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. That certainly applies here. And we were talking about it earlier. He's going to get criticized heavily if Correct. he goes for two and he doesn't get it. But, Correct. Um, but I don't know what his um, – the analytics with Ron Rivera are, I don't know what his reputation is for going for two in that particular setting and that particular situation. Would you, would you have gone for two there or did you understand why he kicked the extra point to go to OT? Um, <clears throat> my whatevers are not that big where I think I would have gone for two. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I, but that's not my style, but hey, so I'll say this <clears throat> a couple years ago in New York, they drive down, it's, it's on the road, go for two, they miss. Remember, the, I think that was the um, Kyle Allen game. Right. And so the, the rationale is you're on the road, you go for two in those situations. And in this case, he opted not to. Now, the, the reasoning was, they, and this, like you talk to guys afterwards, and they, they agreed that they were gassed after that drive. And just the hurry-up nature of it, the, the hustling here, hustling there. Like, and yes, they're pro athletes, but you want them, you know, the, and that drive, you're like it's it's a lot of get up to the line, get up to the line, gotta get here, gotta get here. And I think the feeling was that, you know, maybe I, I think if you could have taken a timeout and, and talked about that or or just planned something, they give them a break, then maybe you go for it. And so I wonder if that was part of it. Um, but but in talking to players, they did say like, yeah, they kind of felt like that at the end. So I think he definitely thought about it, but. I think ultimately it came back to that. Now, whether it's a right or wrong call, if you again, if you make it, then it's the right call and it's gutsy and all that. If you don't, then it's like, what are you doing? Because right. you had a chance to go into overtime, and then they get the ball, and it's, so it's going right for them. And then, then you have the the pass to Terry McLaurin, which may or may not have been in bounds, and so it's that close of, of a decision. But John, you how know, much does um the the new t uh, overtime rules affect the calculus on that now? Because it, that I in, don't know. In I, all I likelihood, yeah. you're likely to get the ball back. You're at least likely Correct. to touch it unless you give up a touchdown. Right, you you are, and and that's that's a fair point because you know. Um, but I don't know. I think mm -hmm. the analytics would still say probably. I believe say go for two. However, again, I think you you can't you can't just go by analytics. And I, I remember talking to. Um, I think it was Sean McVay one time. He said, yeah, on fourth down, the analytics say go for this, but the analytics don't tell you if your left guard's been getting his ass kicked all game. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So you, so you, it's a situ you, you take that, but you also apply it to a situation. Um, but, yeah, that could be. I mean, that could well be. And, again, they still had – they were still in position to do something. And, um, you know, I think he also went for it on fourth down earlier in the game on the first – Touchdown. I think it was the first touchdown drive. Mm -hmm. So it was a fourth and one. With and Logan, when Logan was yeah, playing for yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. So, you know, so like it's not like, the, you know, I think that was the, very much the right call. Um, as I think the two-pointer, I was okay with them not going for it. But, again, I know, like you said, like you're going to be criticized because you didn't, and that's the life of a coach. Mm -hmm. So we're talking to John Keim, ESPN.com insider covers the commanders. So I saw this next gen stats thing about the Eagles that they had four different pass rushers with at least six pressures. Josh Sweat right. had nine pressures and it kind of surprised me because I thought just my eyes watched the game that the offensive line played better. Did they? Well, I think, you know, it's funny because that's one where like that was, they, they had some effective blitzes um, and it did seem like the pockets were much better. Yes. That's one where I want to like, I, 
I've been able to go back and watch some of the game, but I was focused mostly on Emmanuel Forbes so far this morning. But that's the other thing I'm like, because I am curious about that, because you look at it, it's five sacks, really? <laughs> that's, you know, but I know there are a couple times where I know where Wiley had the one bad series and a couple other, you know, he had one other one, I think, early in the game. But it seemed like they did a better job. And I know, again, sometimes it's not just with most of his sacks, it hasn't been on the offensive line. I think their job yesterday was to, to really, I think, the interior to be stout against that group, and they seem to be um, with the interior guys, which was big because I think that's what Howell needs. Um, but, you know, you definitely saw some miscues, but what I want to see is how much of that was created through some blitz pressure because they did have some issues with that. Um, and, you know, but it seemed like they were able to give him some good pockets um, yesterday, and that was, my, that was one of my issues even when he wasn't getting sacked is the pockets aren't great either. And so, you know, that's something that, that he absolutely needs. Um, but yeah. So Jack, somebody sent me an interesting stat here. Actually, it's our friends from ref, the district uh, and Jack Del Rio's defenses in uh, the first four games throughout his tenure here have always been somewhat mediocre yeah. in terms of giving yep. up a lot of yep. points. Right. So yeah. it, just to get the context in 2020, the first four games, they gave up 28 points per game. After that, 18. In 2021, yeah. they were giving up 30. After that, they knocked six off at the rest of the way, 24. La uh, 2022, they gave up 27 a game, and then they cut it down to 18. So far through four games, they've given up 30. So Jack kind of maybe yeah. uses the first four games to feel it out, and then he adjusts. Is that what I can gather from well, that? Well, that's what you can gather, but they all we heard <laughs> off the, the entire offseason and entire training camp is got to start fast. Got to right. start fast. No excuses. Got to start fast. So, you know, that was, to me, part of though that Baltimore, those practices were to help you put yourself in a better position mm -hmm. to, to see what, because it's so, it's, you can, the picture can get so skewed going against your own team. So that was supposed to help that, right? So, I mean, I think this, I think they have used that in the past to improve, but the whole thing was got to start faster. So the, to me, like, there's no excuse for that. And some of that, a lot of that yesterday were the big plays allowed. I mean, they've, they've allowed too many big plays. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a problem last year early. And, we, you know, you kind of write it off to, well, you know, William Jackson isn't a good fit here. And once they kind of moved away from him and they, you know, they put, you know, this, and mm -hmm. Cam Curl comes back, they were much better. But they have to be better. And, and because there's – that to me is – that's what the disappointing part about yesterday was is that, you know, the offense responded in a major way. And the bedrock is supposed to be the D, and they did not come through, right. period. And uh, if you're not, you know, so that to me is disappointing. So whatever they want to say, it's just disappointing because you didn't, you know, and I mean, that's the bottom line. They've got to play better. John, always better. appreciate you joining us every Monday. Thanks, pal. Thanks, guys. All right, thank John you, John Kime covers mm -hmm. the commanders for ESPN.com. When we come back, we'll open up the phone calls again, 800-636-1067. It is a Moral Victory Monday <laughs> presented by Janika Myos. Join the mission at careers with M-I-O-S.com. Did Riverboat Ron get too conservative at the end, not going for the win and not going for two? We'll tackle that next here on The Junkies.